I am so excited to have with us here on the Real Estate Coffee Break our very special guest, John Mangum Extraordinaire. He is a triple threat, a, a, uh, a real estate investor, a real estate broker, and worst of all, a CPA. John, I had a quick question about, and uh, you've talked about this before, but the details elude me, as so many things in my life do now that I've reached the this stage of, of having some odometer mileage on me. Um, so, John, let's, let's lay down a little bit of a framework for our listeners. Good. Because you're asking me to bridge the 121 to section 121, uh, section 1031 tax deferred exchange arena. But let's let's get a couple building blocks. If we're going to build a house, let's build a foundation. Then we'll put the walls up, put the roof on it, get it all done up. Section 121. If it's your primary residence, the goal is to not pay tax on the profit if you sell it. So let's say you and Margie buy a house for 300 and you live there for a number of years and you sell it for 700. Okay. That's a gain of 400. Yep. You'll use easy math. Gain of 400. If you have owned it and lived in it for any two of the five-year period preceding the date of sale, you can exclude up to 250 per person. You can exclude up to 500. Your gain is 400. You go to closing. You get the check. Home free. Pay no taxes. Got it. Next step. You and Margie buy the house for 300. You sell it for a million. Your gain is 700. I'm liking this better and better, by the way. You can exclude 500, but you'll pay tax on the 200 above the exclusion. This is starting to make me nervous. I bet you have a trick up your sleeve. <laughs> Bought it for three, sold it for a million, gain of 700, you exclude 500. What can we do? Or what if you're in a very wealthy area, maybe California, and you bought it for a million and you sold it for five million. Your gain is four million. You can exclude 500. You'll pay tax on 3.5 million. Long term capital gains tax, federal maximum rate is 20%. State of right. Georgia, 6%. Tax on $4 million, is, that's close to a million bucks. So let's set that book of tax law aside for a minute. That's primary residence. Over here, in the other camp that you and I work in, Section 1031, right? if you sell investment property, we'll use a rental house because we can all wrap our head around what that is. Right. You buy a rental house for 100, you sell it for 300, you got a gain of 200. If you do a 1031 exchange, you can defer the taxes by buying a replacement property of equal or greater value within 180 days of the sale, You got and you've got to identify. So there's some rules. Right. So Section 1031 has some methodology to allow us to defer the gain. So now let's put both of these things up in front of us. Primary residence, investment property. And let me take you back to pre-license, back when you were a young real estate student. You remember That's the chapter, a long time ago. And, this, and, and I promise I'm taking you somewhere that will be beneficial. Okay. It's part of the framework. All right. Rights of ownership. You have the right to quiet enjoyment. You have the right. right to use a property. You have the right to encumber a property, put a mortgage on it, right? You have the right to rent the property. But the right that they don't put in the book is that you have the right to change your mind. You have your right to change the use of the property from primary residence to held for investment. Right. You pack up, you move out, you rent it out, and now it's an investment property. Or... You could flip it the other way. You could have a rental property at the beach and decide to retire there. You move the tenant out and you move in. So you have the right to change the use of the property. And if you change the use of the property and you also get me going on questions about taxability upon a sale, the question is going to be addressed by looking at how is the property being used at the time of sale? Is it a rental house? Is it a residence? And this is where the tax planning comes in, the strategy. Let's take you to the million dollar California mansion that you bought years ago. Right. You sold for five million. 
and you can only exclude 500 of gain. Out of 4 million, you're going to pay tax on 3.5 million. Yikes. So you scratch your head and say, Mangum, if I were to move out of my mansion and rent it for a couple of years, then what could I do? Right. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the tagline, then I'm going to explain it, then we'll do the tagline again. All right, real quickly. Because this is what's going to let you get a good grip on the front door and go in this house. Good. Right? We built the house. we got a couple of yep. elements of the house. Yep. If you qualify for both, if you qualify for both Section 121, exclusion of gain from the sale of primary residence. Right. And you qualify for 1031 because the property you're selling is a property held for investment, rental. Okay. If you qualify for both, you can take both. Whoa. Now let's go go, so let's, go ahead. Let's talk about those elements. Okay. How do you qualify for 121? You live in the house for any two years of the five year preceding the sale. Right. So let's say five years ago and four years ago, you lived in the house. Let's say 10 and 9 and 8 and 7 and 6 and 5 and 4. You've lived there for 15 years, but you moved out two and a half years ago. Right. And turned it into a rental property. Then you ran it as a rental property for two to three years and then sold it. When you sell it, how is the property being used? Income property, investment. right. Can you do a 1031 exchange? And you sure. know I like to frame questions so that the answer is always yes. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so you're selling a rental property for $5 million on the California coast. You're going to do a 1031 exchange. And you call and say, but wait, I used to live there. John, did you live there for two years in the five years preceding the date of sale? And the answer is yes. So at closing, you set up your 1031 exchange because it's got to be set up before closing. But the way it goes down, you go to closing, you take $500,000, put it in your pocket tax-free, and push the rest into the 1031 exchange. My brain is exploding. This the is great. The gain is free money because it was your residence. Right. The rest goes into a 1031. You go buy investment property, rental property, whatever qualifies. We can talk about like kind on another chat. But the idea, and, and here's the tagline again, and then I'm going to hand it all back to you. If you qualify for both of these fabulous tax benefits... You can take them both. Brilliant. And those are the kind of numbers that will help some of our clients, some of your people, our people, sell their homes around Atlanta sometime in the next couple of years, build their investment portfolio, and still have a lot of walking around cash. John, as host of the Real Estate Coffee Break, I have the unique ability with Zoom to look into the camera and I can look out at our vast viewing and listening audience and I am seeing brains exploding, heads exploding all across the fruited plain and people are saying, holy mackerel, this opens up a tremendous possibility. John Mangum, CPA, investor, and Realtor, thank you so much. It, and I, I know your day job is uh, facilitating 1031s, among many other things. You've got more plates in the air than the last guy I saw on Ed Sullivan show. So if somebody wanted to reach you to talk about 1031 or possibly what a qualified intermediary was, is that something you'd be willing to chat about? That I'd be glad to chat with them. John, let me uh, let me give you the 800 number, and I invite your listeners to call and ask for our brochure. Good. Call it, and whether they reach me or, or any of my folks at headquarters, we can explain the 1031 process. Uh, we do it every day. Um, and it's fairly simple. It's 800-332, and you know the rest. 1031. 800-332-1031. Thank you, very, John Adams. Very good. John Mangum with uh, uh, all the news that is news about uh, tax manipulations. And all of this is within the law and is right there in writing and was set there for us 
as a guideline. I mean, this is not, we're, we're not like stretching the boundaries or anything, are we? Not at all. Not at all. Fantastic. At all. John Mangum, thank you. As always, talk to you again real soon. John, thank you. My pleasure, as always. Take care. All right.